Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. IBM Interconnect is the Chew Hotel show at the MGM and here, people shuttling back and forth, keynotes are going on. Mike Kuhn is here, he's the Vice President of Flash Systems at IBM and he's joined by Tom Cook, CEO of Permavit. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, it's great to see you both again. Great to be here. Great to be here, Danny. So Thank Mike, you. been a big uh, couple of weeks for you guys. You had a big announcement last week in Almaden, you're here at, at, at Interconnect, giant cloud show, 20,000 customers. So. Give us the update since we last talked. I mean, a lot of things going on. Great, love to, you know, two big announcements last week, right? We started the first part of last week with our announcements around software-defined storage, launched the IBM Spectrum family. A lot of traction around, you know, where the marketplace is moving, how we're responding to that. A billion dollar investment around that part of the business. And of course, as you know, um, we launched a billion dollar investment around Flash a little less than two years ago. So last uh, week, end of the week, we launched our third generation Flash system, or all Flash Array. Uh, enterprise storage solution, uh, put the whole software stack on top of it, complete integrated solution, highly scalable. It's just uh, really been an amazing week for us last week. Yeah, so you know, Tom, what do, you, what do you make of that? I mean, it's like the, uh, you know, we're from Boston, it's like the Brady to Edelman play, that billion dollar <laughs> investment, right? Uh, you're making some investments yourself, maybe, not, certainly maybe not quite a billion, but uh, you've been at it now for a while with Permabit. Um, really going after that, that data reduction space. So Absolutely. Flash has been a big tailwind. Can talk about what's going on there? Certainly has been. So we're probably the most focused organization in the world on data efficiency. Uh, more engineering resources going to it, bigger investment than anybody else. And because of that, we've been able to bring very high performance, very high scale, and very resource efficient uh, data deduplication compression to the marketplace. And we're happy to be partnering with IBM here on another offering, and that's what we wanted to talk about today. And you're right, Flash is, it's a big deal. The fastest growing products in the world today are all data efficiency enabled, and we think IBM has the best suite of, of uh, uh, attributes and the best suite of capabilities in the industry now. So before we get into the details of the relationship and the specifics, I want to step back a little bit and talk about some trends that you guys see. So our David Floyer in 2009, did all these, he's a former IBM, right? So he's good at, you know, and he's a techie, so he's good at like log, log graphs and exactly. stuff like that. So he pulls out the data. 2009, he said, this is kind of an interesting trend. I think that, that Flash is going to actually be cheaper than high performance disk by 2014. So we wrote all this stuff up, people said we were nuts, and I don't think he missed it by that much. Yep. So we're kind of there, aren't we? I think we're there now. I think we're there right now, so he was right on. Yeah, I mean, maybe a couple of months off. Right. And so, so we're seeing that high and that that high high performance disk is now an oxymoron. Right. So what does that mean, and what do we see for the rest of the market? So so look, um, Flash is the is the is the fastest uh, storage out there. Um, our clients are are deploying about twenty percent of their data, their active primary data, on Flash, the fastest tier of storage. And and when we talk to them, we say, what's the other you know capacity layer? And the cheapest tier of storage they have is the storage they already own. And that's where our software-defined uh, strategy comes into play, right? So you can take our, our software-defined capabilities and you can, uh, you can do better storage management, storage optimization on the storage they already own, and you can sort of seamlessly manage with our, our dynamic tiering uh, capacity, um, how you manage storage across you know, both tiers of storage, right? But clearly, you know, we've reached the tipping point um, with our with our uh, data reduction technology today around the flash uh, business, uh, it truly is cheaper than uh, high performance spinning disk at a 50x you know times performance. Uh, so uh, it's truly changing the way clients think about it. Of course, it's a very transformational technology, right? Um, we lead with not the speeds and feeds of flash and not the economics of flash. We lead with how this is transforming their business. So whether we're talking about healthcare or finance or retail, we're talking about how it's truly changing their business. And now the economics have changed. It's really been taken off. Yeah, so, and Tom, when, when you guys first got into the whole data reduction, sort of OEMing business, if yep. you will, you really started with the spinning disk side. Um, and, you know, you got a kind of a tepid response. People don't want to put anything in between there. Now Flash completely changed everything and became a tailwind for you guys. What have you seen there? Well, so certainly there were some early stage companies that set the trend here and got out there and built 
data efficiency into their flash solutions. And when Mike originally uh, acquired TMS, it was kind of just a screaming fast box, a tier zero box. And he's transformed it into fully, with full management features and uh, data reduction compression technology of theirs. And what we've seen is the whole market now, because the floodgates open, the whole market wants data reduction technologies across the board, because it's all relative. Your savings are relative, whether it's spinning disk or whether it's flash. And we've brought flash together with partners like IBM into the cost spectrum that now customers can afford it for tier zero, tier one, and tier two. And Jamie Thomas talked a lot about that uh, the other day in her address, talking about really opening up more workloads uh, for customers. This is just win, win, win for customers, and that's a great thing. So, uh, Mike, you guys got kind of the secret weapon in real-time compression. You made the acquisition a number of years ago in Storewise, and, and, it's, and it's worked out really well. What are you guys doing together? What, are you just piling on now? With, uh, well, as you, as you know, duplication or yeah, that well, work? as you know, we have we have two solutions. We have our flash system V9000 and our flash system 900. So the nine, the V9000 is our highly uh, optimized stack, single integrated solution, um, highly scalable environment. And then we have the 900, which is just a screaming fast flash array, right? And a lot of clients have said, "Geez, I'd love to have that tier zero application still, or I'd love to have it deployed in a way where I can just have." you know, data reduction on top of it, right? Uh, Deduplication, um, uh, you know, real-time compression, and that's where the partnership, you know, with Permabit came in, right? So it's a meet in the market play, it's a meet in the channel play. Mm -hmm. uh, I was out here in Las Vegas about two weeks ago at IBM's Partner World event. We talked with many of our distributors who are, are, are planning to announce this very, very soon in terms of having this solution available uh, to our end user clients. Well, that's huge news because, um, you know, the, 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 the knock on the tier zero is always great performance, but it's expensive. So now you're really attacking that. So what do the economics look like? How should we be thinking about that? Economics are phenomenal. I mean, when you think about with our real-time compression technology and our V9000 today, uh, we're getting about a five to one uh, you know, data reduction, right? So those economics say that we get to below $2 a gigabyte uh, with our V9000 solution. Now with the 900, we're seeing, we've done some testing with the Sandblox product from Permabit, and we're seeing you know six to one when you combine both uh, deduplication and their compression and their appliance. That's and right. so when you start looking at those price points, you're now saying this is now truly cheaper than spinning disk. N you know, not only uh, at, at the acquisition level, then you start adding in all the uh, benefits of you know better energy efficiency, you know better cooling, less density. It's a no-brainer right now. So last year, clients were saying, you know, why flash? Kicking the tires, lots of POCs. Now it's like, why wouldn't I do flash? Right. That's right. It's interesting. I mean, I was. I was on a road show last year talking to customers and I'd ask them how many people are out using an all flash array. Very few actually, mm -hmm. hands went up. Um, that's changed dramatically. I presume you've seen the same thing. Um, what, ha what are you seeing in terms of all, all flash array adoption in the marketplace? This is certainly we're seeing growth in the marketplace. The top two products in the market over the last year have data efficiency, they're both flash products as well and Mike's product is, is right up there. And we certainly think uh, deduplication will help him get that in the highest growth vector in the industry. It's what customers want today, and it's really a no-brainer as a customer because the latency is so manageable and so superior to other storage environments that you, with the data efficiency, you have an extremely cost-effective but very high-performance solution. So you're a technology provider, uh, essentially, to IBM. That's you've, got a, you've got a pure sort of OEM model. What does it take? to actually um, integrate mm -hmm. the technology. Can you talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, so it, it's really as simple as hooking this up with your fiber channel switch um, and, and carving out a LUN and, and, and optimizing that LUN through us. And we work side by side with the full stack that, of Mike's product, which is just great. Um, Sandbox works with any fiber channel uh, products, and so it, it, we, you know, the promise is it'll just work, and it really does just work. But we've been working with the IBM lab for more than, uh, labs, going back three years. And so these partnerships take a while to create and they take a lot of trust. During that period of time, we've shipped nearly 10,000 units into the marketplace through other uh, partners of ours. So this is a really a tested solution that IBM customers can really rely upon and, and uh, Mike and his organization. And Mike, I want to come back to sort of the IBM strategy. Uh -huh. um, you guys made the acquisition of TMS uh, a couple years ago. Uh, you've married that with uh, SVC or V9000, uh -huh. right? Am I getting my product numbers right? Uh, IBM Spectrum Virtualized. Yeah, but previously. The SVC code wise. stack, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, but that was that with the core code right. that came out of SVC. Right. And that was the stack, you married those together. Correct. Great, 
excellent you know, you know, solution, but you had to have an SVC. Uh -huh. Now you've got a full stack solution in your, your new announcements, uh -huh. um, and you've got a partnership with Micron that uh -huh. you're talking about. You're, uh -huh. going, you're doing the world tour now. Right. That attacks cost, it's you know, modern platform, efficiency, performance. Talk about sort of that whole product line and that integration where it fits. So, so when we uh, when we acquired the technology from uh, from TMS, it was uh, a highly optimized hardware I/O hardware management platform, ran extremely fast. As you know, uh, we're not using commodity SSDs; we're using our micro latency module. We actually launched it as the IBM Flash Core technology. That's what we're calling it now. This is not commodity SSDs. This is our IBM Flash Core technology, which runs at you know, as you know, uh, Dave, microsecond speeds. So now we've married that with all of our SVC code stack. The reason why we don't call it SVC is we've done so much that sure that's a 15 year old tested proven uh, software solution but that's been optimized for flash has been integrated in there single management interface highly scalable scale out scale up design a lot of our our, our value around um, our IBM spectrum family now is available single price point in our flash system b9000 solution so that really is our, our tier one play right now and of course we're still selling a lot in the tier zero space um, our flash system 900, which does not have the software stack on there as, as uh, integrated, but you can add it on, obviously. Um, but that's also been a hot seller as well, uh, especially with our Power Systems brand. So Power 8 mounts their CAPI interface, right? And so where they talk about having two terabytes of memory in Power 8, you can now, because this is an FPGA design in our flash system 900, you can have like 57 terabytes of memory here. This thing runs so fast, it, it acts like memory, and at a price point that is order of magnitude cheaper than memory. So that's a power. memory extension. Can be, uh, can and, be. And, and it's a, it sort of eliminates not only the spinning disk, but the overhead of a storage protocol. Right. Right. So that would not be SAN attached, that would be direct attached through a CAPI interface card in the Power 8 uh, server, right? And uh, so you can deploy it that way, you can deploy obviously the 900 as a SAN attached, you can deploy that with a solution like Sandblocks from Permabit, and then of course you have the V9000, which really is the full integrated, you know, software stack with our, with our array, and uh, that's some, sort of a, a game changer right now to get us into the uh, tier one space. What are you seeing, Tom, in terms of if you hear this talk about the all flash data center? Are you are you seeing that um, either directly or indirectly through your OEM customers or the demand? We're, for we're that? seeing some in cloud. Um, we're seeing some in selected spots. Yes or major sections of real-time processing that's going on and things like that, um, absolutely. Uh, but what we're seeing more is hybrids are the predominant um, portion of, of sales today, and that just means that a company like IBM can handle everything all the way through the stack, right onto tape. You guys right. even reminded of that, uh, that of us, the, us of that the other day. You know the other thing that I think is really cool here that we haven't really talked about is scalability. And, and Mike's product really can scale, which is very different than some of the upstarts in the marketplace who've been out there. And you know, that's where the rubber really meets the road for the IBM type customer who's got hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of information that they want, and they want to manage it in a, as, as Eric Herzog referred to it, as, a, as an ocean of data rather than a, a lake of data. I thought that was a pretty clever <laughs> analogy. I love, what do you guys think about that? Data lake, data ocean. Everybody yeah. talks about data yeah, it's lake. A, it's a data ocean. Right, you think data ocean is a occurrence in an ocean, right? It's more dynamic. We're riding the wave. We ride, you can ride <laughs> the waves. I mean, you can, I guess you can ride waves in, in lakes, but then, you know, yeah. not really. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just to spend a minute and, and key on what Tom just said on the uh, scalability uh, of the product. You know, a lot of people talk about they have a scalable solution. They kind of have a you know small, medium, large solution. You know, with with, uh, with our IBM V9000 solution, it's a, it's a scalability design where you can start with one, you can scale to two, you can scale to three. It's it's seamless. It's non-disruptive. I mean, these are the things that you would expect, right? Everybody talks about having a scalable solution, but only a few people really deliver what we just talked about. So that's a real differentiator in the marketplace right now. And I think that sort of is the value of IBM around this technology is this, you know, we've got everything from concurrent code load, concurrent maintenance, encryption, all the enterprise reliability characteristics, which you would imagine, as well as a very robust software stack, which has been optimized to run on Flash. So. We're really excited about that. But just let me say one more thing on that. So, th and this is one of the areas where most data efficiency solutions fall down. They can handle up to 20 terabytes or 50 terabytes or something like that, but you start going into hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of information and they fall over. And it's because it's a very challenging thing to do. And this is where the marriage is really a good thing because our capabilities really match up extremely well with the customer base and the capabilities of Mike's product line. 
Well, there's a lot of religious, you know, discussions going on out there in architectures, but, you know, we're in this scale-out, big data world, mm -hmm. so we can see the writing on the wall, so, I mean, everybody's got to get there. I got a couple other questions. You mentioned tape. Do you spend time thinking about tape? Tape's, tape's having a revival, absolutely. Uh, you talk about the all-flash data center. There are clients right now talking about tiers of flash, hot flash, cold flash, no pun intended, right? They're talking about tiers of flash. Tape's making a comeback, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, we see there's a there's a performance tier and there's a capacity tier. And, and the capacity tier is making a big comeback with tape. So uh, it's having a revival. Tape's key part of our uh, our uh, IBM storage solutions. And uh, we're starting to see that that has some, some longevity with it. The reason I ask is you're you know, heavily involved in flash. Mm -hmm. The marriage of, of flash and tape is something that we've looked at now for a mm -hmm. couple of years. Right. Called, David Floyd called it flate. Kind of a silly term, but the idea being if you have metadata today that's locked inside of a tape and you can escalate that up onto a flash layer, you right. can actually write algorithms to optimize the seek on tape and tape the, with flash becomes high, both higher performance and of course much lower cost Correct. than disk. So, is that a pipe dream, or do you actually see clients thinking about making that sort of tape flash layer the sort of you know new bit bucket? Not a pipe dream. We're seeing a lot of this with clients that do security work and defense work, and we can't talk about specific agencies. They're all three-letter agencies. A lot of video surveillance and things of that sort, right? So, you know, having access to the data off a of tape is hard, right? So using flash as the layer for your metadata to do some editing, to do some real-time stuff, and then of course, you know, demoting it back to the cheapest tier of storage is having a big impact from an economic standpoint, mm -hmm. as well as it's a lot more flexible than it ever has been before. Well, and that's, people don't think of tape as actually potentially faster, but Discs, just spinning discs, just keep getting slower and slower and slower. You can't spin them faster. Correct. Physics don't let you do that. And nobody's investing money in disc heads anymore. Why would you? <laughs> I mean, maybe there's a couple a of guys. It's a 60-year-old technology. Right, there's, there's, you can't move the data any faster off right. the disc. So it's like a little straw going into the disc, whereas tape, you can do a lot of things. They're, each, they're each, each hard disk drive is giving you about 200 IOPS per second, IOS per second, right? That's that's slow, right? Some of these flash arrays that we talked, this uh, this 2U uh, flash system 900, 1.1 million IOPS. This is like an you know, order magnitude over a, a spinning disk drive. So I want to ask you a question. We asked, John and I asked this a lot of folks. You know, we've, we've watched a lot of transitions in the storage business. You saw the virtualization trend. You guys acquired XIV. Tom, you, you saw it. You saw 3PAR, huge you know, exit. Uh, you certainly saw it with Isilon. You know, great, nice. So we say, all right, is Flash going to be the same? Or if you look at the, the big players, IBM, HP, EMC, they've got their Flash strategy sort of laid out. Will the upstarts, in your opinion, I'd like to both of you to weigh in here, will they be able to achieve escape velocity? Or have the big guys got it right this time? You first. Well, you know, that's a hard one because uh, when we first started looking at all the flash startups, we were tracking probably 30, 40 viable solutions, right? When you talk about escape velocity, uh, they I escaped, think, but in the wrong direction. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're talking maybe uh, one, maybe two, right? That's kind of what we see right now. I think a lot of bets have already been placed. I think uh, right now it's scaling very, very fast. Um, you know, we talked about the stack, we talked about the performance. There's still a lot of people that are on commodity SSDs, they have to do something. We, we were doing commodity SSDs in 2009. We knew that that was only going to take us so far. So that's why we made a big shift two years ago, right? A lot of other people are going to make that shift again. Then you have to talk about service and support. I mean, we do the best service and support, I think, anybody in the industry, uh, and we do it in 120 different languages. So that's the kind of scale that you need to kind of take this uh, technology mainstream. And I don't think there's too many that are going to have that kind of escape velocity that you talk about. That's right. So the transformation that's going on certainly is kind of transitioning from where we are today with a lot of on-premise to much more in the cloud, too. It's only the largest companies in the world that can really do that and do that extremely well. And we're seeing that really shake out. I, I kind of wonder whether we're going to see a real uh, 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 um, bit of a gap develop here between what the big people can do, and the, the, the tier one vendors can do in the flash space, and I think they're going to take back the space that the upstarts have done over the last few years because they have the ability to build in their management stack, they're building in mature data efficiency, whereas the upstarts were, are kind of struggling to do both right now. So I think we're going to see uh, Mike's, Mike's company and others like him take back share over the next year. So we're getting the break sign. My last question for each of you. 
everybody said for years, we said, oh, flash changes everything, flash changes everything. We certainly believe that. When we look out a couple of years, when we look back, what's the big thing Tom, that you're going to say, okay, Flash really changed X. What is that X? Mm -hmm. So I think IBM has it right, business insight. It's going to give us the ability to really accelerate what data coming in and how quickly, uh, how quickly that turns into information that I can help operate my business with, as well as then tear it out and get it to a cheap space. So I think underneath it all, the facilitating technology, one of the facilitating technologies is data efficiency. And it's mission critical to bring down the economics so that we can do that in, in, in a cost So you second way. that, Mike? Is it's really the business outcome? Is that... yeah, absolutely, let me just give you a little broader perspective. Um, you know, Speed matters, access matters, right? So our, our strategy around software defined around Flash is really about having access to all the data. Data is exploding, as you know, and it's about doing things in real time. So it's going to be about you know driving data into to the insights, right, and doing it in real time. This is what's changing people's business model, whether it's healthcare, whether it's uh, financial uh, services, whether it's retail. It's about doing things in real time now that they couldn't do before with all these massive amounts of data. It's a data ocean. We're riding the wave. <laughs> awesome. Well, storage remains the linchpin. Flash is really at the center of that real time. This gentleman, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Thank thanks. you, David. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from IBM Interconnected, Mandalay Bay. Right back. <laughs>